Hello guys, welcome to another SOLIDWORKS tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create hexagonal bolt with threads. I will use helix command and sweep cut command in SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to use hexagonal bolt which is DIN 933 standards. DIN is a German standard if you want to have equivalent standard in ISO it is 4017. Uh, if you look at the dimensions, uh, it would be the same. So I'm going to de design M5 bolt. So there are two sizes for S. So I am using minimum. That mean, this means that the size can be varying between these two figures. I'm going to use minimum size for the S 7.78. So if you look at ISO 4017 uh, M5, uh, so S equal to 7.78 similarly K equal to 3.35 here K equal to 3.35 so this is uh, ISO 4017 or DIN 933 standards you can easily learn about this standard if you simply Google search so there are a lot of resources that you can find over the internet so here I have collected some article from Wikipedia which is one of the most reliable source. It is saying about DIN 933 which is M1.6 to M53 hexagonal cap screw fully threaded. So which says status is withdrawn that means this standard is no longer being updated but we have got equivalent current standards which is DIN EN ISO 4017 uh, and ISO 4017 those are the standards that are updating and relating to hexagonal bolt all right let's uh, actually get started following the drawings and I'm going to use this drawing dimensions let's open up a new part file in SOLIDWORKS select top line and click on sketch go to hexagon polygon commands and create a hexagon and before that if you are not using a template make sure that the dimensions are changed to millimeter grams and second go to edit sketch and let's add dimensions so first is s s equal to 7.78 so i'm going to add the distance between two faces 7.78 and let's add exit the, the dimensions let's add few relations click on this line make it vertical now the sketch is black and which is fully defined exit and go to features and click on extrude so now we have to extrude it by k k equal 3.35 here i'm going to extrude this by 3 millimeter and 0.35 i will create this small protrusion so i will make it 3 millimeter and click ok now click on this top line and create a sketch go to circle and create a sketch at dimensions I'm going to use M5 bolt. Uh, this dimension is big, slightly bigger than M5. I will make it 6.5 millimeter and go to features, extrude, extrude it by 0.35 millimeter. Click OK. Now again, click on this top surface. Click on sketch. Go to circle. Make a circle. Add dimensions. Make it 5 millimeter. And this is M5 by <coughs> 10 bolt. So usually if you actually measure the bolt using a caliper, it would be less than 5 mm. It would be 4.95 mm or something. But here for the design check, I am using 5 mm. Go to features, extrude the length 10 mm. Usually when we label the bolt, the length of the bolt is counted 
from the bottom of the head to the end of the shank. Press Ctrl 7. Alright, now the head is created. Basic model is created. Now let's add few finishing features. So go to chamfer and let's add some chamfer at the end of this bolt screw thread. So you can find the chamfer command from here. Click on chamfer and uh, click on this edge and make it 0.5 millimeter. and uh, make it 0.3 millimeter and click OK and use the middle mouse button to rotate the bolt and click on this surface and create a new sketch go to circle and click on this line and create a circle similar to this and if you drag this one it's not constrained so let's add few constraint click on this circle and click on this line press ctrl click on the circle and then you can select tangent constraint using pop-up dialog box now exit the sketch is black and fully defined so i'm going to create this uh, chamfer shape around using extrude cut command i'll show you how to do that go to features and click on extrude cut so now you can use middle mouse button to rotate so if you cut it like this, uh, the depth is 10, you don't, it, it doesn't have to be 10, you can just enter 5 because this thickness is uh, just 3.38, 5mm and if you hit OK, it, it doesn't work. And now what you have to do is, you have to make it flip cut outside so using this arrow you can see move in move out when you when the arrow is in inside there are some contradictions so you if you when you play around this one you will understand what it is so flip outside click ok now you got get the result like this so let's add the draft feature so in order to have this shape you have to add the draft click on draft and make it 60 degrees or 40 degrees 45 degrees and click ok there you go the shape is created the finishing shape is added to the bolt if you if you choose the other way around if you click this draft outwards then you will get the different result that's that's not correct so I'm trying to show you this one to see, show you how to, how this command is actually behaving. So now the bolt basic shape is created with all the finishing features. Press Ctrl 7. All right, now it is time to create the thread. As I mentioned before, I'm going to use helix command and sweep cut command to create the thread let's first look at the thread profiles so for matrix bolt i'm going to use metric profile again these informations are taken from wikipedia you can find heaps of resources over on the internet let's look at the terminology so if you look at the thread the pitch, chamfer, thread angle, crust, and the root, minor, major pitch diameter. You can clearly understand what they are. And also, for metric thread, there are two types of threads, coarse pitch and fine pitch. The coarse pitch is the most common type of pitch that we are using in our daily activities with the daily works fine thread is extra fine smaller pitch and there is another pitch which is extra fine thread pitch so which is not actually discussed here so i'm going to case coarse pitch which is 0.8 for m5 and let's look at the thread profile 
So there is a relationship between H and P. P is the pitch, H is the height of the triangle. Don't misunderstand, this is not the height of the thread. Thread height is 5 8 of H. So thread angle is 60 and the crest width is 1 8 of pitch and root width is 1 4th of pitch. This is for ex external thread and for the internal thread we have smaller root for internal external thread we have bigger root. Go through these uh, dimensions and relationships then you will understand better. The relationship between H and P is H equals 0 0.8660 times pitch. So based on this formula we can figure out the rest of the values. This pitch standard is basic ISO matrix screw thread profile and standard is ISO 68.68-1 68 ISO 965. Let's get started. Before we create the pitch profile, thread profile, let's create a helix. In order to create a helix, we need a sketch. So in order to create a sketch, I'm going to use 3D sketch. Remember, there are more than one way of doing this. Just This is just one of the method. So once you create a 3D sketch, go to convert entities. I'm going to create this circle into a sketch. Now we have this sketch. Then next is the sketch. And let's go to features. Under curve, click on helix. Once you click on helix, it asks us to select the sketch. So I select this sketch. Oops. Apparently the sketch is not created. Sketch is created. Now if you go to the curve helix, you can select the curve and again there is another trick actually. When you are outside the sketch, you can't create helix using 3D sketch. It says sketch cannot be insert inserted. But when you are actually in the sketch mode, which is interesting, when you are actually in the sketch mode, you can go to curve helix then from here defined by height and pitch <coughs> the height of the whole thread is 10 millimeter and the pitch is 0 0.8 millimeter and clockwise it can be the clockwise or anti-clockwise and this is the starting point you can change the starting point by changing the starting angle when you hover your mouse on the plane you can see the starting point is on the front plane so this is good things to know that then we create the profile and click on OK. Now the helix is created. Let's go to front plane because which is the starting point of the helix and click sketch. Press Ctrl 8 and now I'm going to create a sketch from here for the thread profiles. So now this is the, this is the point where we are using these relationships. So I'm going to create a triangle. Starting from here, I'm going to create a triangle. Similar to this. And this would be external thread. So we have to follow this profile. And the height of the pitch is 5, 5 8 of the H. H equal 0 0.0866 by pitch. So I'm going to create a formula 0 0.8660 into the pitch equal 0 0.8 into 5 divided by 8. This is the height of the thread. And click OK. And again here, this is the root. So for the root for external thread is 1 fourth, 1 fourth of the pitch 
and the crest equal one eighth of the pitch. So now I'm going to at the root divide by four. Zero point eight is the pitch divide by four. Similarly, we don't have to. We don't need to uh, worry about the uh, the crest bit based on this profile. So thread angle is 60 millimeter and again let's add few more dimensions what else we want to add we need to make sure that uh, the sketch is fully defined uh, in order to do that let's uh, add one more dimension so let's have one more dim dimension from here to here and click ok now the sketch is black which is fully defined and click ok Let's see the sweep cut command will work in this sketch profile, profile and path sketches. So we can use helix as a path. We can use this profile, tooth profile as the sweep cut profile. This sketch as the profile. So let's go to features and first exit the sketch. Let's go to sweep cut and the tooth profile tooth sketch is already selected as the profile and let's select the path and you can see nice profile nice preview and click ok press ctrl 7 there you go you can use middle mouse button to uh, rotate the model so the thread is created as per ISO standards so this is m5 by 10 bold and you can simply go to here and you can hide this sketch helix and you can add material right click on material edit material and then you can use stainless steel stainless steel click apply click close and press ctrl 7 and then you can save the file I hope you have understood how to use helix command and sweep cut command to create a correct tooth profiles and also create a bold. You really don't have to create bold but I just wanted to show you how to use this command and explain about some of the standards that we are using. If you go to a website, there are few websites that we can use to download any bolt that we want. So this is just the hexagonal bolt, but as a developer, the product development engineers, you can use plenty of, you are using plenty of bolt uh, in their today life. So I have created only the hexagonal screw or hexagonal bolt, but there are a few different type of bolts that we are using. A button head button socket head cap screw which is the head is button and with the socket head hexagonal head and socket head cap screw which is a cap screw with the socket hexagonal head and countersunk socket head screw which is a countersunk head with the hexagonal socket and pillip pan head screw which is pan shaped head with the pillip socket and countersunk pillip head pillip countersunk head screws and hexagonal bolt so I hope you have understood about bolt and how to use few commands to create a bolt in SOLIDWORKS if you like my video please hit the like button if you think my video are useful please subscribe the channel hit the bell icon so that you won't miss the next video thank you for watching